feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answer to no man, I still go Go, go, Stop! Go, go. Hold the press! An Orchid Ninja has a question and with that everything else gets put on hold. Thank you so much for clicking on this video which will answer Orchid Ninja Joy San's question who I call number five. A little story which I will share at the end of the video for those who are interested and wondering how her nickname came about. Joy Sun was wondering how I keep focused on the orchids and if she's the only one that struggles maintaining enthusiasm day after day. Also, to share how I keep up my motivation, so here we are. Let me just mention that. Orchid Ninjas know that they can ask me anything as the welcome video in the member side of YouTube mentions. They also know that I will give an honest answer, an answer they may not expect, and possibly an answer that may not resonate. But them's the rules for Orchid Ninjas. There is no sugar coating, and then I take a deep breath and hope not to have offended anyone. <laughs> So in no particular order, the how I maintain enthusiasm and stay motivated and what drives me are some of the following. And I say some because I probably miss something, but you know how these videos go. I'm going to focus on the most important ones, the ones that come to mind sporadically. First of all, you. Yes, you. Orchid Ninja Joy Sun. I have told you many, many times that when I see your name, Joy, it triggers just that in me joy and i'm going to extend that to all orchid ninjas because all of you are giving me a vote of confidence that you believe in me and my channel and are supporting it by becoming orchid ninjas you see i have so many plans for orchid ninjas that at this point in time i cannot implement for reasons and yet here you are supporting that side of my channel despite not getting what i laid out to do for you going places etc but you're still here so you are a big motivational factor that is huge because it motivates me to keep going so that my channel will one day grow enough and I can deliver on my promise. Now that is from a channel perspective, but you see your vote of confidence in me is the personal motivation and enthusiasm that you as an Orchid Ninja provide. You fuel me. I hate saying something and then not delivering. It is something that weighs heavy on my mind. I am driven and motivated by you because once I can take the horsepower out and about without worrying about what the next electric bill is going to be paid with, we are going places. And I cannot express just how much of a massive motivational factor that is. The enthusiasm part is when I see your names with your icons pop up and I get to call you by your respective names and add the sun behind it. I smile every time I get to do that. So thank you to Orchid Ninjas who play a huge role in maintaining my enthusiasm and motivation. You are all the wind beneath my wings, which otherwise would lie flat against me. One day, those wings will be strong enough to surf the skies together with you without fluttering around, risking a dive bomb. <laughs> that is the plan. And then there are the comments, for example. A comment that says, this video came right on time or this video was helpful, or this video answered a question that I could not find answers for, etc, etc. Reading comments like that, it just sends my enthusiasm and motivation into turbo charge. Do you already see how right out of the gates you have a lot to do with my continued enthusiasm and how much of a motivating influence you all are? I really, really hope so. But wait, there's more. <laughs> The continued enthusiasm that I have no issues with is also due to the fact that my orchids remind me of everything I used to know when life had not started throwing me one curveball after another. My childhood was not all beaches and coconut juice. It was tough. But when I was in the tree branches with my ratty looking orchids, sometimes no one could find me and that is exactly how I liked it. Being in the confines of my patio, I have the same feeling. Every orchid that I purchased to build this collection that is still with me is a cherished memory from days gone by. And I also get flashback of things that I had long forgotten. When that happens, it's such a comforting feeling and I keep digging deep into the memory bank to find more of those flashback nuggets. You see, I've done a lot of mental erasing in my life just to cope. 
Going back to the days when I was a kiddo myself can be painful at times, but not when it comes to remembering the orchids that started the phase where I could find peace. When I get those flashbacks, I feel at peace. I don't immediately try to discard the memory. Knowing that at any point in time I can have such a recollection drives my enthusiasm. If I never had to step foot outside of my patio ever again, I would be one very, very happy person. My anxieties would go away completely. Unless, of course, I find pests that are decimating orchids and I was none the wiser. But for the most part, I don't have to mentally prepare myself for anything when I step outside and spend time with the orchids. I can find any excuse in the book to not have to go anywhere just so that I can maintain a somewhat stable heartbeat. That in itself is a great motivator as well. But Joy Sun, you mentioned in one of your points the weather being too hot as a possible curbing enthusiasm influence. Well, I have to say that is something I have as yet to have happen to me. On the contrary, when the weather is warm, hot even, I am all over the orchids. It boosts my enthusiasm even more. That includes the added workload because of how I know that the orchids love it. And that knowledge just fires me up all the more. However, that is the easy part. Warm, nice weather, enthusiasm comes easily. How do I cope with the enthusiasm continuity when it gets cold and dark? Well, I talk to you guys. See, it's all about you. It just all comes back to you. Seriously, I'm being flat out honest here. Let me tell you, talk about the motivation boost when it came to the traumatic winter and spring of 2021 and 22. I still have side effects from that experience because wow, there was nothing much I could do but watch and hope that the orchids will be okay. When I wasn't filming or editing or talking to everyone in the comments, I was in a very, very dark place, for real. I mean, a really dark place. And so were the orchids, of course, but internally I was losing my mind. Without the video concepts that I wanted to make happen and doing all that, then being able to talk with everyone in the comments, there would have been absolutely zero enthusiasm. So once again, thank you to all of you who were around during those months because you were the reason that I could continue being motivated and I was still enthusiastic despite what was happening at my end. Joy Sun, you also mentioned no blooms being something that could pose as a deterrent for losing the enthusiasm on the daily. Well, I can tell you from where I'm standing, if an orchid doesn't bloom but is otherwise growing well, I will settle for that. The enthusiasm that I get from that is figuring out the why. What am I not providing for the orchid to bloom or why do my buds keep blasting? <clears throat> Mailman, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Sorry. I find it fascinating to have an orchid grow well and then at the last moment it dumps the buds. I know it's weird, but I find it fascinating. Often I already know when it happens, why it happens, but having a channel, it motivates me to document these kinds of events so that maybe others will benefit from that information someday. I don't lament a non-blooming orchid. As long as it is not declining or on the verge of death, and for that reason is sending out bloom spikes, which will cause its demise because we are seeing an orchid in bloom and think, woohoo, everything is just fabulous. She's finally blooming. But in reality, the blooming is a swan song and a cause for alarm because something is not right with the orchid and we cannot see the why beyond the beautiful blooms. Knowing that, Blooms are wonderful and the reward for years of caring for an orchid that is healthy and perfect. But if I were to focus on blooms as a motivator day in, day out, I would have lost enthusiasm for orchids many, many decades ago. If I could show you how ratty my orchids looked in Kenya, you would probably say, where is the enthusiasm for a collection like that? Well, <laughs> I think that's why I like Sopresa so much. <laughs> She reminds me and gives me flashbacks of what the majority of my collection looked like while back in the trees. <laughs> but my enthusiasm back in those days came from new growths and new roots, and that has transitioned all the way through to present day. And then, boom, a monkey takes that part where the new growth was. Where is the motivation then? Well, the fact that if the orchid piece was big enough, it would send out another new growth. 
delight and smiles and wow, check this out. <laughs> I'm serious, it was just like that. Because checking to see when that would be the case and discover another new growth kept the enthusiasm going. As a child, I never saw the decimation of an orchid as something negative that would affect me for days. I draw on that with this collection, although be it, I'm not too successful at it. The difference being, here I am trying to keep my orchids alive in southern Spain in circumstances that are not ideal for them, for the most part. In Kenya, they belong to nature, and nature does what nature does for millennia with orchids. In Kenya, I was responsible for their welfare only to a certain degree, picking up chomped up and broken pseudobulbs for the most part, but anyway... <laughs> While here, I am totally responsible, so that is my motivating factor. Respecting that they are living beings which I have chosen to acquire and care for in the most extreme circumstances for some of them, that motivates me on the daily to ensure their well-being. I hate losing an orchid. I take it personally when I lose orchids because I am that monkey that caused the damage, overestimating my competency or my stubbornness got the better of me. When I lose orchids, it's not like I lose hope as well, but I then get some form of motivation because now I know and those kinds of orchids should not be in my collection. Enthusiasm, however, reignites because I have others that are doing well. It doesn't mean I forget about the ones that I lost, but I make sure that if I'm going to get a replacement that I know exactly what I did wrong with the other one and can be pretty certain that I won't repeat the same mistake or a replacement does not come into my collection. And that is why I don't grow Rinko Stylus. <laughs> no more of those and I know exactly what I did wrong, but I cannot correct it because of my climate. My motivation switches straight to the ones that I can grow, that I do have, and that motivation then focuses on me trying to do better by them. Life in the way. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm not trying to contradict anybody, but life in the way, curbing enthusiasm. <clears throat> that only strengthens my enthusiasm for orchids. As I mentioned, take me away from my patio and I start to stress out. The pull towards my patio is magnetic. You should hear me growl at life. <laughs> I actually blame life getting in the way for the downs in my world, but it emboldens me when it comes to my enthusiasm for orchids and working towards not having to go anywhere for any amount of time. That is a huge motivational factor. So I have tried to eliminate anything out of my life that gets in the way of me and my patio. It's not realistic, of course, but uh, pretty close. No rain, yes, that is also a very good point that <laughs> whew, enthusiasm kind of goes by the wayside when you cannot provide adequately, especially when water supply otherwise is cut short as well. However, it does not stop motivation or enthusiasm for me, but it did freak me out when I was faced with that situation back in 2021. You see, usually our modern times provide us with water that we need for the kiddos, but the workload does increase when there is no rain, and for anyone growing who is dependent on rain, I can see that enthusiasm and motivation would take a hit when it doesn't rain. But for me, it's part of what I'm used to, have come accustomed to, and for that reason, it doesn't dampen my enthusiasm or curb my motivation. Get that pun? <laughs> it really doesn't dampen my enthusiasm when it doesn't rain, sorry. Little joke and pun intended, <laughs> but honestly, it doesn't. You see, as mentioned before, there is an added workload when it gets hot, but when these conditions arise, I know it's great for my orchids and I am all gung-ho. And when I need to put the turbo on, I can. <laughs> So if you're still with me, thank you so very, very much. And as you listen, please comment as to what motivates you on the daily when it comes to your orchids. But I'm not done yet. <laughs> so here goes. Let me tell you, on a more serious note, let me tell you that my orchids have saved my life on numerous occasions. They have since I was in the trees in Kenya because I had an extremely abusive parent and my escape would be in the trees where the orchids were. Not because of the orchids at that time, but they just happened to be there. So I would sleep there and wake up and watch critters and such do their thing. And in my adult life, same 
thing. Because I had to get up to tend to the orchids. Because the angle of the sun needed the curtain dropped or raised depending on the time of day because there were blooms and fragrances and new growths and new roots to rejoice over. That made me get up and function. I owe orchids a lot. Don't get me wrong though, sometimes I regret even starting this collection because I did not want to have such a responsibility in my life anymore. I did not want any attachment to anything that I could risk losing again, but here we are, and they did save my life. So I am driven to make sure that within my limited means, I will be there for them and hopefully return the favor as to preserve their lives and maybe save some along the way. That isn't just me talking about my collection, but any orchid of anyone watching any of my videos, which then does a complete switcheroo and begins to thrive and eventually bloom. I consider that another life saved. Keeping that in the back of my mind is an incredible motivating factor. And I would not be honest if I did not add that. My enthusiasm and motivation also comes from desperation. I am desperate for my orchids to survive, even if they don't thrive. Just survive. Because I truly want to believe that better times are in their future. As mentioned, I cannot take losses very well. I struggle when I see an orchid decline. I could flamethrower treat everything when I see pests, but of course that would be silly because that would do the orchids no good. But anything that is a threat to my orchids, I consider enemy number one. And yes, that does include me needing to leave the patio because needs must. And it includes me as their caretaker. I am and can pose a threat to them on the daily simply because I want to do right by them or I forgot that XYZ is soaking, XYZ is outdoors and the angle of the sun changed and I did not catch that in time, etc, etc. I am also a threat to my orchids. So you see, desperation is a huge motivator. The fear of loss that comes with it and then the fact that I beat myself up for days afterwards, which is not something I want to be doing either. The desperation also extends itself to needing my channel to grow. This is no joke at the moment. It really is my lifeline. Seeing as I do not see anything else coming my way in the near future, and I use the word near strategically in this sentence because I need my channel to grow faster than it is, seeing as the noose is tightening around my neck, figuratively speaking, of course. Striving to get my channel to grow faster, just like with any position I took on as a professional in the workforce, is my motivator. To work hard and see that hard work pays off. It is such a feeling of satisfaction. However, my boss, YouTube, is a different beast though. It appears, from what I can take away seeing my channel's performance or lack thereof, no matter how hard you work, almost three years into this job, if we continue along the lines of being a professional, no matter how hard you work, I have not even been promoted to the next phase of an associate. I am looked upon as still the newbie, the one that is a good and reliable worker, but no one ever pays attention to. Until someone gets sick and has to take a few days off, then suddenly I'm good for those couple of days before the other worker returns and I'm pushed back into the sidelines. I would love a promotion in my job as a YouTuber. <laughs> Imagine working 14 hours a day, no day off for two and a half years and your hourly wage is 0.5 cents or thereabouts. There is a determination in me and I refuse to buckle. Meanwhile, I cannot afford to buckle, but I go to work every day hoping that the boss will notice me and then I can do more for the company I work for. Just as an analogy, imagine you have to go to work, be at work at X hour and you don't have a means of transportation. So you take the bus, but your bus route has the last bus which makes you have to leave work after you have done your shift, otherwise you won't get home. Now, imagine you get a promotion. You get more money coming in and now you can afford a car. You can get to work and you don't have to be leaving after your shift because you're not dependent on the transportation schedule anymore. Suddenly, you are super productive. You can jump in on a moment's notice. If someone else cannot make it to work, you can react, respond and be a real support to your team and the company. Win-win, right? That is how I feel about YouTube. 
I'm currently so limited in my movements and what I can do from my channel. If I can get my boss YouTube to spit my channel out of the dark hole that it happens to be in within the algorithm, then wow, we are going places. And I mean we. There's so much to do, so many things to see, so much to share. The potential is endless. The ideas I have for us are second to none, but right now I have my position with my mop and bucket in the hallways and back quarters of YouTube, just waiting for the big boss to say, hey, what about that channel? What about Ninja Orchids? How about we give that channel a promotion? And then <laughs> watch this space because you really don't want to miss it. So please show the algorithm boss that Ninja Orchids exist and like the video, share this one or any of the other 600 plus videos I have on my channel. And if you have not subscribed, please do so. It will indicate to the big boss that this channel is worth a promotion. Thank you so much. And those are the main points. Those are the most important points. Those are the factors that keep me enthusiastic and boost my motivation. But now, if you're still here with me, thank you so very, very much. Let me go back to what I mentioned in the beginning and tell you how Orchid Ninja joy Sun became number five. joy Sun was on my channel commenting right from the beginning and we shared just how much we enjoy reading up information on orchids or researching orchids via videos, anything to do with care, anything to do with orchids for that matter. And I think it was joy Sun who mentioned the movie Short Circuit. If you have not seen it, please look for it. It is so worth watching. It involves one military robot that has gone a little cuckoo in his software and he just loves to read. And boy, does he read. Speed reading on a whole new scale. Seriously extra. <laughs> and when he's done with any volume he was reading, his next word was input meaning he needed more information that he could absorb and memorize. Eventually, it went from books to television. <laughs> he was the first example of the television babysitter. <laughs> well, anyway, when that came out that joy Sun had the same affinity and we laughed over the same movie, joy Sun became number five. If you've never seen that movie, honestly, I highly recommend it. It is so fun. A little silly at times, but most of all, it is fun. And number five will probably worm his way into your mind as well because input. I will never hear that word without thinking of number five. And now it just so happens that joy Sun is always a part of that as well. Bringing another smile to my face, just like the name Joy does. You see how all of you, the channel, my orchids, everything works together. That enthusiasm and motivation is going to be a tough one to quash. Not that I want to try it. I am not accepting a challenge to see when that will happen. But you see how all this works together? Thank you. Thank you for giving me that added dimension to what I love about orchids before all of you came along. And thank you so very much, Orchid Ninja Joy Sun. Your email was uplifting. It injected another dose of enthusiasm and filled the motivation tank up as well. You see, it's all about you and the orchids that keep me going once again. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. Your support is appreciated. I say it. I mean it just as I mean it when I say have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.